Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam, and today, look what I have. This is the Flysky FSI-6S transmitter. I have been wanting to get one of these for a while now, and I finally did. So many people have been asking about how to do certain things with the Flysky i6S instead of the i6 or the i6X, which is what I have been flying with like this guy right here. Now, this video is just going to be an unboxing, first impressions kind of video. And I know I'm not really crazy about those because they're not super helpful in terms of facts and things that you can actually do with the transmitter. It's just kind of my opinion. But I know some people enjoy watching those types of videos. I will just show you my first impressions of this radio in case you enjoy that kind of thing. And stay tuned because I'm gonna be having a lot of content specifically for the i6S. The user interface on this is not incredibly different from the other Flysky radios, but it is different enough that I think it could be confusing for a first time beginner with this radio. So expect to see a bunch of content. The first thing we're gonna do is fix this center throttle here and that's gonna be the next video on the i6S so I can actually start using it and trying it out. And I know a bunch of people have already done videos about you know basic stuff like changing the throttle centering and that sort of thing, but I figure I may as well be thorough and you might enjoy seeing it on this channel. And to make this video a little bit more worthwhile, I'll just tell you right now, if you're wondering about the i6S or the i6X, again, I have not fully tested the i6S, but I will say if you fly airplanes a lot, if that's your primary thing, you wanna do airplanes, I would go with the i6X. If you want to fly mostly quadcopters, I would go with the i6S, but there are various things that one has and the other does not. So that's not the only consideration, but that's what I'm saying as a general guideline right now, that's kind of what I'm thinking. And to make this video a little bit more worthwhile for some of you out there, so shiny. Looks, it looks like an angry, evil snowman. I'm an angry, evil snowman! Ha 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 ha! Welcome to the Fly Sky World! Ha 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 ha! All right, definitely some nicer packaging, much nicer packaging. I'll give a little commentary here. And oh, wow. I'll tell you what. One thing I noticed right away these gimbals are really good. Like, really, I mean, when I say that, I mean they're way better than the i6 gimbals. Unless, unless the i6, no, they're better. Wait, let me get it right now. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I'll tell you what, yeah. The i6 gimbals, I can feel, and I may, I may have done a few adjustments to these, but I can just tell, and they're very, very, very loose, these ones are, which I've gotten used to. Anyway, so there's that for reference. Nice, let's get it out of this little packaging. Okay, very um, blocky. Two power buttons, because, you know, one isn't enough. You know, what was most interesting to me about this that I did not realize until I actually looked into this a, a bit more, and I feel like they don't make it super obvious, is that you have these variable position switches right here. And actually this one's auto centering. I didn't know that until just now. So you have an auto centering position switch right there and the same on that side. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure we could just, uh, I'm pretty sure we could get in there and take out the auto centering, but I definitely see how that would be good if you want to do like a pan pan or tilt on the camera. And then we have these switches up here. We have two three position switches here. Let's see, so one, two, three, one, two, three. And then this switch right here. So four switches, but two of them are three position, which is, uh, that's that's better than the i6 or the i6X. So we have the standard like trainer port or whatever on the bottom and then the USB port. Cool, another thing I did not realize that existed on here. What are these buttons right here? That is very interesting to me. Um, they're almost hidden. I mean, they're, they're not even labeled. I think that's part of why I didn't notice it. It seems like you probably could accidentally hit these buttons if you didn't want to, but I could see how it 
could be useful. Uh, so we do have the switches here, kind of in a different position. Seems like this would be probably just fine for pinching. Maybe a little wide, honestly, because look how much wider right here the, from the edge to the edge. I can't, it's hard to line these up, but. So I, I think there's more edge distance on the i6s. We've got this metal, or I think it's some kind of metal. This feels like metal, it feels cold. And then we have this thing right here. We have this metal handle, cast aluminum, I mean, something cheap. We open the battery compartment and we still have four double A's. Wish we had something different, but I actually have a sneaky little idea about, about making a battery adapter that's like a super simple drop-in battery adapter. Could be super sweet. We have a USB cable, micro USB cable. And then we have an FSIA6B receiver, so pretty standard receiver. The nice thing about this is you could use, you could use it uh, with uh, iBus for quadcopters, or you could use, uh, use it for just like a regular airplane thing with six channels, so very versatile. This is for the gimbal to adjust the tension. So this is a little gimbal uh, uh, tension plate type of deal. And that's it. So actually very, very little. Let's see, what else is in the box? And then we just have this quick start guide, which uh, let's see how quick it is. It's funny that they have a drawing, but then they put a picture of the gimbals. I'm thinking maybe you could use the variable ones, like for trim, potentially, since you don't have, since you don't have other types of trim. Um, We'll, we'll play around with that. We'll look into that. This thing is fat though. I can tell you, I can tell you right now. It, it just, it feels really like bulky. Just right, you know, right off the bat. I, I like that this one is a lot thinner. It feels better. Of course I'm used to it. So there's that. Um, yeah, this one definitely feels more bulky. And cause we really, we have these like big old fat grips. And I don't even know if these grips, there we go. So the big old fat grip. Oh yeah, that definitely makes it smaller, which I think will probably maybe be better for this. I don't know, let's put that back on there. So the big thing that is annoying to me is that they have the throttle as auto centering. I don't like that because it seems like they're really selling this for like, like camera drones, photography drones, like that type of thing where you would want an auto centering throttle, but uh, I really wish they would just sell it without the auto centering throttle. So I'm guessing we'll need to go in there and take out a spring and put in that tension plate. Okay, we got some batteries right here. And oof, I do wish, I really wish it came. I wish it came with a gimbal protector thing. That would be nice since this is supposed to be sort of sold as like a more premium version. So we'll put some good old fashioned end of loop nickel metal hydride. And now let's power it on. So I'm guessing we have to press both of the power buttons at the same time. Maybe we have to press and hold. Oh, wow. It has a different beep. All right, it can sing songs. All right, let's take a quick tour through the menu here. Up. Oh my gosh. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna be honest with you here. All right, um, I think that does kind of beat having the little buttons. I feel like I'm playing a Game Boy or something with this thing. Makes those noises and it's got like that green green and dark blue screen. Okay, so let's see what we got in here. Reverse, endpoints, sub trim, trims. Can I just do this? Oh, I can, that's kind of cool. Rate, expo, throttle curve, aux channels, mix and fail safe. Now, one of the things I was really curious about this is what kind of mixes they have. Okay, that's actually an improvement. So in this one, you have four mixes. I'm not quite sure why it's limited at four as opposed to three, but I'll take it. So let's say on. Oh, there we go. So now we actually have all this information. Okay, trims, oops. That, that is one thing. If you have fat fingers, this might be kind of difficult. Sub trim. So that, okay, I see. Wow, this is so different. I'm pretty sure, oh wait, function and system. 
What? This is interesting. Okay. Uh, about. So this is my firmware version, just for reference. Uh, let's see, sticks mode. It is kind of hard to focus on like the screen the way it does like the blur, but it's not too terrible. Models, how many models can we do? Wait, 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 what? Oh, bro, no. You can only do five models? Three, four, five. Oh, is that true? I need to make sure that the firmware is up to date. Uh, but yeah, I think this is definitely, this is definitely aimed at the quadcopter drone type of thing. Output mode. That's nice. See, look at that. You have a little thing, you just select it like that. You know, definitely, it is definitely a slicker, a, a slicker look. That is very interesting. A lot of really cool things. Be sure to leave me a comment if you want to see a specific kind of tutorial for the i6s and subscribe if you want to be seeing more content on the i6s. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon. I'm just doing a bunch of stupid faces so I can get a thumbnail for this video. Because if it's just going to be an unboxing video, I may as well make it silly.